Happy Friday, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. We're going to take a little bit of a different style video this week. We're going to cover updates on the lockout. No new product this week, and we'll go into all of that here. Let's not waste any time. Here we go. And welcome back to youtube.com slash Zebra Breaks. Referee Brandon Toll here sporting my Bengals crucial catch hat. Who day as they are in Nashville tomorrow to play the Titans in the divisional round. If they can get past Tennessee, they'll be going on to their first AFC championship game since 1989. Man, I feel old saying that. So uh, we're going to take a little bit of a different uh, twist here on the channel this week. Uh, there is no new product opening this week, guys. Um, I've put it out there on social media last week, uh, and then I put it out there this morning. I was actually supposed to be in Fort Lauderdale today for Impact on Access tapings, but I am not. I am at home. Uh, take it as what you will, um, and I'll, you know, I'll just throw it out here and say it. So uh, I tested positive for COVID a week ago on Thursday. Um, I've been luckily, thankfully... Uh, I've been symptom free now for almost a week, but I am still testing positive. So, uh, I am still in home quarantine. So for everyone that, uh, was in my Bowman draft light break back a week or so ago, packages have not gone out yet. They will not go out until I'm able to test negative and be able to leave the house. Uh, they are staying here for the time being. So, uh, I've reached out to everyone about that. So in the meantime, we are going to talk the lockout because we are closing in very, very quickly on what should be the beginning of spring training. Uh, so I think it's a good time now more than any, especially because I have no product this week. I'm not able to leave the house to be able to cover the lockout, the status of the lockout. Where are we going into it? Obviously, I'll give my thoughts and opinions on it as well. In the meantime, before we get into that here, guys, uh, with me being out, um, I've missed roughly about 85 to 90 percent of my monthly income this month from missing uh, television this weekend and last weekend as well. So having said that, uh, my code from last weekend from the Bengals uh, win, uh, ZebraBreaksMerch.com, 20% off, Hooday20, use the code. Any kind of support you guys uh, that you guys can give towards me, towards helping, will be a great help towards uh, trying to recover what I'm, what I'm, just the big hit that I'm taking uh, this month for not being on the road. Uh, if you want to check my social media, I do have some slabs I'm selling. If you're uh, interested in buying some higher-end slabs I'm putting out there, so check it all out. Support me, support the channel. If you're interested in the Bengals uh, variant shirt that I created, I have that on my stream elements. I can, I'll can i put the link to that in the description below as well. The special uh, Zebra Breaks in Hude form uh, for the Hude as they are going for their win tomorrow in Nashville. Hopefully. Uh, for me as a Bengals fan, I'll say this up front before we get into the lockout. We're playing with house money right now, in my opinion. Uh, for me, with Joe Burrow in, uh, the way the Bengals are playing this season, for me, the goal was to get that playoff win. Get that monkey off the back. 31 years. It's been a long time. So for me, we're playing with house money right now. Would I love to see him go to the AFC title game? Absolutely. Do I think they can? They've got some of the tools there need to be able to do it. Uh, they're going to have to get past Derrick Henry. Um, and just the multiple threats that Tennessee has on offense and on defense on both sides of the ball. Bengals getting back uh, Hendrickson for this week. We're not, uh, we don't have Okeechobee, unfortunately. So it's going to be an interesting game. I'll be home watching here from home on Saturday afternoon uh, as they go to try to head to the AFC title game. So who day? Go Bengals all the way. All right. Now having said that, let's go to the lock. Let's talk the lockout. So we are very, very, very quickly uh, – Get closing in towards uh, spring training. Normally, it's February 1st, right about, for pitchers and catchers reporting. Um, so there's not a lot that's out there because there really hasn't been a lot of movement uh, for the lockout in terms of talks between the players and the owners. Uh, there's been some articles this week. There was a proposal put out last week uh, that uh, basically the players just really scoffed at, uh, but it's, it wasn't really uh, seen as a serious attempt to try to move the needle on the negotiations between the players and the owners. So a couple of articles that I read this week uh, that I thought were interesting. They'll kind of bring us to where we are with this, both coming from The Athletic. Uh, first of all, the first one from Kenny Rosenthal, um, who has, in, I don't want to say embroiled, but is, has his own little drama uh, regarding him being uh, let go from MLB Network after talking negatively about Rob Manfred, which is um, weird. Like, Manfred's not loved by the majority of the fans. 
Uh, I know that for a fact. So for him to be speaking negatively about Rob Manfred, he's an honest reporter. He's one of the best baseball reporters uh, in the game. And for him just to be acts like that out of MLB Network uh, is just mind-blowing. But he'll make money anywhere he goes. Obviously, he's still with The Athletic. He has his other ventures as well. So let's take a look at this here. This is from Ken Rosenthal of The Athletic. Uh, titled, The Pressure is Mounting. MLB cannot afford to lose games this season. I abhorrently agree with this concept. Um, you know, talk about the relate. you know, basically it goes into the relationship between the owners and the players. You know, it basically continues to play out like a bad marriage. You know, they're not really listening to each other, barely speaking the same language. Um, the talks are amount to theater at this point. Um, you know, if you want to go into the history of how we got to this point, um, it's been building since 2016, according to Ken Rosenthal. Um, almost immediately after the last CBA, the players' agents bemoaned that the deal was a win for the owners, um, and the owners not content to gain any advantage that had eluded them in more than four decades of collective bargaining. Spent the next five years turning that win into an ugly rout. So here we are, you know, where with, with the state of where we are between the players and the owners. Um, when you're looking at it, uh, the union uh, is asking for across-the-board movements, uh, seemingly to regain all that was lost in the previous CBA in one fell swoop. Um, you know, a path that appears difficult, uh, especially if games are lost. Many fans will not care to debate whose side this is, which I am absolutely in agreement for. The, the game has just built so much good currency in the past few years. Honestly, in a lot of eyes, mine included, it's taken till the past three or four years to get to where we were prior to the 94-95 strike, which we lost the World Series, obviously. If you're watching this, you know that. So, you know, it talks about Manfred uh, getting to where he is, and I'm not really concerned about, um, you know, the, uh, the issues with the owners, and the owners have their own set of issues as to why they're asking for what they're asking for. Obviously, you're talking about rules changes. The universal DH has been a big one. I know Manfred wants to go with the pitch clock, um, you know, which uh, has shown a little bit of promise in the minors. I know the minors are they're going to start using a robotic uh, umpire this season as well, if we have a season. So, you know, where you're looking at, and a lot of it, honestly, it, it stems around uh, the players, what the players are wanting. Um, the players, and it, it shows in proof, and I'll say it here, according to Ken Rosenthal, um, payrolls are down 4% in 2021 compared to the league's last full season, uh, with the 4.05 billion total, the lowest over a full year since 2015. Obviously the pandemic plays into that, but the salary trends, according to Ken Rosenthal are unmistakable and they are in the owner's favor. So the players actually occupy something of a high ground in this dispute. Uh, perhaps even in the view of certain fans who continue to view them as spoiled and overpaid. Uh, many fans historically side with the owners, um, but when you have teams like you know the Blues and the um, sorry not the Blues this isn't hockey <laughs> the Braves and the Blue Jays who are publicly traded companies uh, it just finds it hard for a lot of people just to side with um, to side with the with the owners and the teams at this point. So um, you know what you're looking at here is you know the owners are unwilling to grant an earlier free agency and they even want to change arbitration. Um, but also the players want to change arbitration as well. The players are wanting. Higher minimums and thresholds, according to Ken Rosenthal, an adjustment in the draft to include a lottery of more than three teams and extra picks for teams that reach certain levels of performance. Uh, they want an increase of the players with two plus years of service being eligible for arbitration. Um, and then finally, it seems to be generating a little discussion lately, according to Ken Rosenthal, a minimum payroll threshold with penalties for teams that fall below the limit, similarly to the way that the luxury tax threshold works at the top. There's been a lot of talk uh, from the um, from the players that teams are tanking uh, intentionally to get those draft picks, and it's affecting the on-field performance from certain teams, not necessarily your high-end teams. You want to look at your mid- to low-market teams. So, Kenny Rosenthal, if you, if you aren't subscribed to The Athletic, I would subscribe. I absolutely subscribe to The Athletic. These articles are great. They are so in-depth about it. Um, but basically, right now, we're playing a game of uh, season chicken. You know, who's going to break first at this point? So Kenny Rosenthal goes into real great detail in terms of where we are, where we stand with it, uh, in terms of looking at, you know, basically. And I mean, he brings it kind of 
back to um, he brings it back to the point we can't lose the games, and I abhorrently agree we cannot lose games. You lose games, you're gonna you're gonna disenfranchise a ton of um, you guys disenfranchise a ton of fans who are just coming back to the game. Obviously, guys, Soto, Tatis. Um, you know, you can go down the line to Judge, to Stanton. Um, you know, just the 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 game has gotten so hot. And being on the hobby end of it myself, you see it firsthand. You know, I don't think the hobby is going to be as affected with a lockout comparative to, obviously, the teams in, uh, in terms of the players. Because collecting is always going to be there, especially, like, with Series 1 coming up here. February 15th uh, is the uh, release date. That's a Wednesday for Series 1. We will have it. I will be doing a break of it, guaranteed. Um, and then, uh, most people I've, I've put it out here. Um, I'm going to be going to the series one, uh, red carpet event the night before in Los Angeles. I'll be representing the shop. I crew seven in Los Angeles at that tops event. Uh, the shop was invited by Tops specifically. So, um, be my first, uh, shop related trip. So I'm looking forward to that. I'll have a bunch of video and content on that here on the channel and on my social media, uh, for that. So looking forward to it. I don't have a whole lot of details on it. I'm just, I know I'm going and I'm excited to go. I got my flight for it and everything. So the other thing we're going to look here at is basically, um, this is next article. Also, it's from, uh, Evan Drellich from the athletic as well. It's more of a mailbag basically, um, in terms of questions that are out there related to the lockout, things of that nature. So, and I'm, I'm going to find there was one question that I was looking at that was going to be really, really good. Um, obviously we all know, um, a lot of things around there with it. So let's see here. This is one good question. Let me go back over to this real quick here. Um, one good question that came up with this, and I think this needs to be, this needs to be said here. Uh, the question is, why did the other three major professional sports leagues, the NFL, the NHL, and the NBA, seem to avoid the acrimony and disillusionment of their fans, but the players and the owners seem to be unable to work together to resolve the issues? Um, and the answer, I think this is great. It says, I think, uh, where the notion comes from, we can unpack it a little, but the premise really that is incorrect. Baseball just ended the longest streak among the four major men's sports without a work stoppage since 95. All the other leagues have had lockouts and baseball hadn't until now. Um, the NHL had two lockouts this century, one wiping out a season. We had one a few years ago. Uh, the NBA and the NFL won a piece, plenty of fights in the other leagues too, even absent a work stoppage. Um, he says, but I think a few things are at play with the perception of that MLB's fighting is heavier. Uh, for one thing, if you're of a certain age, baseball used to have work stoppages every other minute. I think it's also safe to say that the Players Association has been the strongest sports union over time. It's been willing to fight in ways other sports unions would like to, but cannot do so as confidently. And that's where it starts to get the core of why baseball stands out. The topics fought over in baseball are indeed sometimes different than those in other leagues. Baseball remembers the only sport that doesn't have a salary cap and doesn't have the accompanying direct split of revenue between the players and the owners. That is the distinction of one of the MLBPAs, the Players Association's signature accomplishments. So baseball stands alone in a lot of ways in terms of their negotiating um, for things that only baseball has. The fact that there is no salary cap. That's why guys are getting insane salaries. So now you go into talk about here, uh, you know, in what week of January or February will spring training be require a delay? Um, you know, so now you're looking at, you know, and you're kind of using COVID, uh, the 2020 shortened season as an example. You can do a shortened camp that lasts about three weeks. Um, it seems safe to assume that the players wouldn't tears later allow for a spring training any shorter than three weeks. So to be conservative, spray that spring training would need to be at minimum three to four weeks long. He's saying four weeks. Your deadline is really March 1st or the days leading up to it to allow for travel opening day schedule for March 31. So if we are in late February and a new deal hasn't been agreed to, we're on the brink of jeopardizing opening day. And if they can stomach a three week camp again, the deadline's about a week into March. So that gives you kind of a real timeline um, in terms of what could be stomached as the latest that we get into before we start losing games for this 2022 season. And once again, I'm totally in agreement with Kenny Rosenthal and the fact that we cannot lose games. So, you know, the players and the owners, um, I think, are meeting again here either late this week or early next week. So hopefully we're going to start seeing some movement, some meaningful negotiation. Um, 
I think the owners are just wanting too much. Um, and I know, understand personally a little bit of their hesitation. I mean, obviously, the Valley Sports Networks, the RSNs, are in trouble with Sinclair Broadcasting um, underwater on them to the tune of billions with a B. So, but the players have given up so much. It's time for the players to start getting back. So I stand with the players on this. I don't think they're going to get everything they want. I think we all know that, but we do. There is, needs to be some give back in that area. So I'm hoping we don't lose games, but that just kind of gives you a nutshell of where we are here with the lockout, uh, what we're looking at, obviously what maybe a predicted timeline is going to be. Nobody really knows. Obviously I'll, I'll keep with the updates uh, through our videos as we go into February uh, and potentially early March, um, you know, uh, even we'll have series one, February 15. Um, but, uh, you know, to see where we go in terms of, are we even going to have a season this year? So let me know what you think guys in the comments below. Do you agree with the players? Do you agree with the owners? What are your thoughts about a potential, uh, you know, the lockout streaming into canceling games for this season? You know, do you want that? Obviously I don't think anybody wants that, but you know, let me know your thoughts about it in the comments below guys. So to keep the video a little shorter this week, that'll do it here for this week here. We just covered the lockout here. Hope you guys enjoyed this. It's a little different for me. So last but not least here, I'd be remiss if I say that, um, and I announced it yesterday on my social media that I've agreed uh, into an agreement with Loop. I'm going to start streaming on Loop. Uh, once I can get uh, test negative and get out of quarantine, I will know when my first stream is. But uh, Zebra Breaks on Loop coming soon. So check my social media for when uh, when my first stream will be. Uh, Going to be daytime streams. I think I, know, I think I've pretty much sealed that down. It'll be some lunchtime streams on Loop. Uh, it won't take away from the breaks I'm doing here on the channel. I will still be doing breaks. Loop's going to be a lot of rip and ships that I'm going to do. So uh, just another little avenue to help build the channel, build the brand. So thank you guys for joining me on the ride with it. And that'll do it for this week, guys. I will see you guys next Friday, 5 East, 4 Central, right here on the channel. Help support me, support the channel, guys, especially with me being out as long as I am. I'll say it again. ZebraBreaksMerch.com, 20% off everything. Who Day 20, use the code. Share a picture of the receipt. I will retweet it, tag, follow all the good stuff on social media. And then in the comment, uh, in the description below will also be the link for the Bengals-specific shirt. If you want the Bengals-specific shirt uh, for the Who Day for the guys um, tomorrow afternoon as they play in Tennessee. So that'll do it, guys. I appreciate everyone joining me this week for the little different take here on the channel. And hopefully, cross fingers, we'll be back with new content. We'll rip some product next Friday, 5 East 4 Central, right here on the channel, guys. I appreciate it. Share, like, tell your friends about this. Let's build this. Round and third and heading for home. I'll see you guys next week.